episode seven, the Takeaway Podcast, with our first guest, the man, the legend, Tillman, Grand Rapids Finest. What's going on? What's up, man? Go ahead and introduce yourself for the four people that don't know who you are. Uh, <laughs> like you said, Xavier Tillman, uh, Jr., in Michigan State. Sure. Um, yeah. I'm born and raised in Grand Rapids. Sure. Did you uh, plan on going to Grand Rapids Christian your whole life, or was that after the hoops became the focus like uh yeah that was really it yeah i mean the scenery at i went to forest Center from like fifth grade to 10th grade but then while i was at forest Center, i just i just stopped kind of fitting in mm. like basketball got serious but then i also just stopped fitting in with like my friends because they just wanted to hang out all the time and i started to get really, you needed really to serious work. about basketball so yeah then i was like okay I need to change. Plus, my grades are going down the drain because mm. I thought I was the man at Forest Hills. So um, <laughs> they treat you oh, like wow. you were. Yeah, they yeah. treated me good. They treated me God good. of us <laughs> men over there, right? Huh? You're a God of us men over there. Yeah. So tall. Yeah. Do they I take mean, basketball serious over there? Uh, for it's the like, most, it's like for the cross most country, part, like yeah, for the most part. But the competition, you know, you just, yeah. So I'm curious it. about that game. So how does it work when you start taking basketball serious and like figuring out what schools you go to? Because you see it like. Kids switching high schools and kids switching colleges. Like, yeah. what's that game look like? Who's coaching you on that? Like, how do you know what's the right move? Or you just guess? You, you just you, figure it you, out? You just kind of process of elimination. I mean, some a lot of people think that they're going to the right school and then they end up transferring. That's really why people transfer is because mm. the coaches and stuff like that will talk good. Like, hey, yeah. like, we'll give you this, we'll give you this, we'll give you this. Right. And you get on campus and they don't give you nothing. <laughs> You're like, damn. <laughs> like, this yeah. is not what you told me. Um, a lot of times they tell like people who are going to be a freshman like yeah you can get a lot of playing time this that and third mm -hmm. and then they get on campus and they yeah. or they might not play like a minute in the game and they're like this ain't what you told me oh yeah. wow and that must hurt because it's like well you got like four years to kind of like show your worth right mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. a lot of people don't want to be in college for four years they just want to do one and done to get the yeah. check one and done. yeah crazy so going into the transfer process, or I guess we'll start before then. What made you choose Michigan State? Did you just grow up a fan and that was it? I was a Michigan fan. My mom, really, my mom went to Michigan uh, yeah. and played for them in college. So, uh, oh, she was a baller too. Yeah, she's nice. Yeah. My mom was nice, uh, all American type. Wow. Yeah, uh, she's like top ten in scoring and rebounding for the. Women's. Yeah, yeah she's that's, that's crazy. crazy. She's legit. Okay. I didn't know you. I was. That cold, mm -hmm. yeah. She, she was legit. She, she don't even talk about it. She was legit. Yeah. She had jerseys and stuff at home. And yeah, yeah. She was legit. You started. I'm assuming you played her growing up, like one on one. Mm -mm. No, so she wouldn't play. I never played my mom. It was so yeah. weird. Like she had all this basketball knowledge. Yeah, but she. I guess I'm, my dad tried to give me a lot of basketball knowledge, even though he only played in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she kind of like laid back. Uh, the one hooper at the Y that thinks right. the nose. Right. She, she yeah. kind of just laid back. And it was I mean, if I gave you the DNA, she was like, I ain't tell you nothing. Like, yeah, was like, I already gave you the DNA. You're going to be cold anyway, regardless. It was weird. She didn't tell me nothing. As much as, like, <laughs> as high as her pedigree was in basketball, she didn't really tell me a lot. Wow. She wow. just let me hoop. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Do you guys play similar? Like, mm -hmm. have you ever seen tapes of her playing? No. No? I, I, so you don't even like, know how like she little, Like, little, little, little clips that I got to beg her to, like, Ask somebody for man, yeah, but otherwise it's kind of hard to get them back then. Yeah, 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 that's so, crazy. So talk about your family, um, brothers, sisters. Yeah, I mom. got uh, I got two sisters. I got Maddie, Madison Tillman, Chaslin Burt. Mm -hmm. Um, and I got five brothers. I got whoa, Tony, Tony Burt, Parker Tillman, um. Ben Tillman and R.J. Tillman. No, so that's four brothers. I got four brothers. So how is it like for them, in, in your opinion, to see you play at State on like the big screen? Uh, are they like, are they like, freaking they, out? Or it, are you still a like, little brother? Like, <laughs> all right, bro, like, cool. Like, it's, it's, they, they freak out um, when they watch games and stuff like that. But then yeah. it's crazy. As soon as they get with me, they flip the switch. Like, back, to little, back to little brother. Like, it's not nothing. Yeah. <laughs> are you the youngest? Uh, youngest boy, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody's as tall as I am. Okay, that was my next question. Do we Maddie, play except basketball? my little my little sister's like six two. Whoa, yeah. she play? Yeah, she's big body. Oh, okay, yeah, East Kentwood. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. she's about, hey. to be <laughs> about she time. About to be Man, oh, that wow. women's team's looking nice. Yeah, yeah, they, they started good. being good like two years ago. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. So then, since you were a Michigan fan, what made you choose Michigan State? I was gonna go to Marquette. Whoa! Oh, yeah. When um, was that? What that was going into senior year of high school? 
Yeah, wow. going to senior high. They were talking to me the whole summer. I kind of fell off of Michigan State um, during my recruiting process. And then I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to Marquette because the coach was talking good. Like, you'll be the cornerstone of the university. Man. Da, 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 da. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to go. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm about to be the man. And then um, we took our official visits. And the Marquette visit was our last visit. And it just wasn't anything like we thought it was going to be. Mm. And then from like right as soon as we took it, uh, I was like, yeah, we're going to go to Michigan State just because we've been to Michigan State probably like in my time being recruited probably like a hundred times. Oh, OK. So they were always so close. getting yeah. you up there. Okay. Yeah, they always got me up there for yeah. you know, football games, open gyms or their games. And then um, <laughs> she's probably been to like 25 to like 30 when it came to like coming to football games, coming oh, okay. to open gym. Or something like that. So yeah. So they we got just, the whole family involved. Yeah, we that just, meant a lot to you. Yeah, we were just comfortable. Yeah. So what about Marquette? Made you not like it? If you uh, could speak on that. So the Marquette campus is kind of like a city because it's in Mo- I think it's what Milwaukee, right? Yeah, it's kind of like mm-hmm. a city. And uh, Michigan State is literally like of East Lansing. Yeah. That's the hub of East Lansing. Right. And I kind of didn't like that aspect, especially for Yanni, you know, my daughter, to mm-hmm. have to like grow up in kind of like that city aspect. Yeah. Uh, and Michigan State was kind of just homey. Yeah, for and, sure. Yeah, we appreciated that. Talk yeah. about uh, balancing a family, playing ball, you know, <laughs> doing school. Like, how do how do you how do you balance all? Of it? Um, it's really to me. I just focus on school. What a good answer, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just focus on school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basketball, and then when I get home, um basketball and school out the window no yeah. family man but like yeah it's hard to to try to do everything at once so i try to like whatever i'm in at the moment like if i'm in class mm-hmm. she probably won't hear from me because i'm not gonna be texting i'm trying to lock in in class yeah obviously if i'm working on her in practice or lifting or something like that mm-hmm. i can't text her anyway yeah yeah so when i'm at home i'm at home devoted but otherwise yeah. i'm locked in on whatever i'm doing and that's powerful because you know you probably have that focus by playing ball that you're able to <laughs> cut yeah. like yeah just like you know, mentality type thing. Yeah, well, it, it workouts never get hard. Yeah, like, like you might get fatigued, but like when I think about them, they never get like more than just a game. Because yeah. the motivation is there. Is yeah, this is the motivation, but you just know like this is not life or death. Like that's life or death for me. Mm. You know, priorities. Yeah. Man, powerful. Is it so, hard for you to unplug when you get home? Like, do you sometimes... From basketball? Like, oh, like, I don't unplug from basketball. No. I watch YouTube all day. Oh, okay. She gets so mad at me. I watch YouTube all day. <laughs> yeah. Or highlights on Instagram or something. Yeah. Is it, is, it. is it easy for you to not bring the baggage of, like, a bad game home or, like, a loss? Yeah. Yeah, how do you handle a loss being, being you know, an athlete? Handle what? Losses. Like, oh. does it affect you much? You no, get mad? Not, not nearly yeah. as bad as my teammates. Yeah, you're not so oh, really? No. <laughs> so, spill the beans. Who's the worst? <laughs> Who's the worst game. loser? For Gabe, real? Wow. Gabe takes it so hard. Yeah. Him and uh, Aaron, those two are like my locker buddies. Yeah. They, they take it hard every loss. That you they think have. that's just because they're young? Yeah, yeah, that's all, I think. Yeah. And maturity will come to it where they're just kind of yeah. start to realize that it's just a game and it's not life or death and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. That's a crazy perspective that you have. Yeah. I mean, it's right. it helps with, like, like that, that whole aspect of like pressure. Everybody talks about pressure. Yeah. But like pressure is if I'm not able to feed my family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pressure's not if I miss a shot or not. And that's funny because I feel, you know, I feel similar to how you feel. Like when people ask me about what I do, how hard it is, I'm like, but there's like bigger things than like a day to day. You know what I'm <laughs> yes. saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. like, you know, my dad could die or something. Like mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, you know, then I got to be, you know, the man of the, of the, my whole, my whole unit, right? And that's right. a lot of pressure about mm-hmm. standing up, right? So it's crazy that you're so young, you've had these situations and that it gave you that unique perspective. So like, you know, your dad said this, but like looking on to the future, like, you know, I'm curious about what are your plans? Like, are you trying to get a four year degree and then go into the league? Are you trying to do business? Like, what are your interests outside of basketball? Um, uh, oh, gonna, with basketball. I'm going to graduate a, a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as my credits are right now, I think I can get done before senior year starts, so like the summer. Or not the summer, but the fall going into senior year, I could be already be graduated. Oh wow! wow. Yeah, because I've been taking like classes year round. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so if I'm here four years, work on my master's degree, try to get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before I'm actually done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I have a degree in communications, just so I can like I love speaking and love talking, comfortable talking. So 
try to do something with that, like on ESPN, like yep. first take or something yeah. like that, and just talk about basketball the whole time. Man, oh, dope. That'd be the dream. That's so yeah. dope. <clears throat> I yeah. watch it all the time, so might as well talk about it. <laughs> might as well be a part of it. Right. Right. So do you have aspirations going to the league or not really? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's why I play basketball. Yeah. Right? I want to go to the league. <laughs> I'm not playing at college for no reason. Right. 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 Yeah. You don't even, when you grow up, you don't think, oh, man, I want to go to college. No, I yeah. want to go to the league. <laughs> I want to go to college. <laughs> yeah so, so I'm assuming of course you've seen the rankings and you guys see that you're number one mm-hmm. how does that affect the mentality going into the season like uh, is it harder to stay locked in none uh, of the preseason stuff really affects us okay. it's just what happened last year how we didn't win a national championship that's all we think about so every workout we're locked in you yeah know? Mm-hmm. every uh, film session and weight lift we're locked in because we want to get back to the same spot and finish the job yeah is that something coach puts in you, or is that something amongst the players that you just have? Yeah, as soon as we walked off the court when we lost that game to Texas Tech, it was like, yeah, I want to be back, especially because like it was a crazy environment. Like we literally played in a football arena. Man, it what was, was what was that like, man? Like walking in, um, did you feel it, or were you so like, locked? No, in you felt it for sure. You felt it. The energy, like, right? It was like crazy. You could usually like see the top of the stands when you're in the basketball. Like you can, oh, okay, there's man. the top. You couldn't see the top. That's crazy. And so I bet it was completely sold out. Probably. Yeah. 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 It was. It was rocking. That's crazy. That's a, that's an event that I need to get back to. Yeah. Like, like high energy. Um, you can get a win there. Oh, so you thrive off that. Yeah. What? The, the yeah. Chairs, oh, the wow. crowd. Yeah. 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 You thrive off that. If there's nobody in the stands, as a basketball player, it's hard to like. Get yourself up for it, especially yeah. if you're not playing against a top level team. Yeah. Because mm. you're just kind of like, oh, well, ain't nobody going to be watching. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a practice or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, talking about last year, obviously you had a big breakout season. Um, how does coach come to you, especially when like Ward gets hurt, right? And then it's kind of your time to step up. How does coach come to you? Or do you already know that? Like, oh, it's, it's my time. Like, and I'm, you know, he's or does he come it. to you, like, and sit you down and, like, hey, I'm going to need you to step up, you know? Um, it was more so like I was I, I think the games before that I wasn't playing really well mm. and I was like okay like man like I've been putting a lot of work this summer like this should be my time right like yeah. dang like I'm I'm ready <laughs> but I'm just not making shots I'm not shooting a lot I'm not really doing a lot mm-hmm. so then I'm like man like what's going on and then next you know Nick gets hurt and I get an opportunity to, to like start and play like serious serious minutes yeah and then I'm like, okay, then I got to take advantage of this. And then it wasn't even coach, but it was the assistant coaches. They were like, well, are you renting or are you buying? And I was like, what do you mean? Mm. And they're like, this position right here, this is up for grabs for you. Are you going to rent it for a Man. couple of weeks till Nick gets back? Or are you buying it and you're not going to give it up? And uh, I kind of had that Man, mentality. That's, that's a good question. Man. <laughs> Man. Yeah. And I tried yeah. to like lock in from there on out. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm going to try to lock in for my team and yeah. lock in for me personally because I put in a lot of work that summer. Yeah. And that was your opportunity to shine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm curious about hype and other players. Uh, how does that affect you when you hear hype and like are people actually really as good as they come off like a Zion or like are they really that good or is it all just hype? Highlights are mud. <laughs> Highlights mm-hmm. are mud. Um, but they are as Big like Zion wasn't like tall, right? Yeah, but, like yeah, you guys are like huge, the same height, right? Huge, yeah. Like, he was huge. Um, who else was really good? Um, yeah, that's a good. Who was played, like your toughest matchup? Like I play guys. Have you heard of Nas Reed? He's um he's a no. big tank guy, right? Uh, no, he played for LSU. Oh, okay. He had the dreads. Yeah, but coming yeah. into high school, this guy was like top five in the country, something like that. So I, I knew all about him. So yeah. I'm like, okay, you know this is gonna be a tough matchup for me. Um, but like he just he kind of chilled during the game. He didn't really play hard, and I was like, "Oh, well, really? you know, barbecue like, chicken." Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> um, that's the thing with a lot of guys with big names. It's kind of like they they go, they pick and choose when they want to play hard, mm. and it's kind of like their downfall. Well, for me personally, I didn't have a name, so I'm like, I got to play hard because yeah. I'm trying to get there. For them, it's just like, uh, well, if we're playing against a big team, yeah, I'll play hard, but otherwise, I'll just kind of be out there. Man, that's great. Even in a tournament, you felt like that. Yeah, even in the tournament, I didn't think wow. like LSU like they didn't play hard at first, and I was like, I thought they were gonna smack us at the start of the game. Yeah, because I'm like, these guys are huge. Like I looked at yeah the physical Cash. team. Yeah, I looked at Cash like, bro, this guy is seven foot. Like I'm six eight. I gotta guard him. Yeah, and um, I was getting rebounds over him and putting him back up. Like, oh, they don't even care. Mm. And that's how it felt like in the game. They didn't really care. Wow, 
Wow. And then he took that W. That just seems like a Michigan <laughs> State mentality thing because we've never really had those recruits, you know? So it's always been something where you come in, the underdogs, come in low seeds, you make those, like, Elite Eight runs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of been, like, the MO since I've been at Michigan State is just people kind of count you out, yeah. you know, coming into Michigan State. Like, oh, he'll be good later on. But, like, every season. So so my first two seasons, I've won, like, more than 60 games. And a lot of people can't say that. Yeah, like, that's I crazy. I got friends who made me won 10 games in college, and this is going into their junior year. So. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't realize that. That's crazy. That's a good track record, man. Yeah. And then, so, when you decide to go to Michigan State, I'm sure you heard a lot of people at high school or whatever, because people like to talk, saying you're not going to get minutes and all that. Have you always been able to block out negative feedback like that? Or yeah, to be is that something that, you I never even heard people say that. For real? Like, not to my face, at least. People were supportive? Yeah. It's, it's weird, though, uh, how people act. You know, you never... Nobody's ever going to talk crap to your face, especially, especially if, when if, you're they're six, not, eight. if they're not on your pedestal, or they're not, like... You know, got stuff yeah. going for them. You know, a lot of people like to talk down to others when they're not in their face or whatever. And right, I use I usually don't hear it. I usually don't see it. I'm not one of those guys who looks on Twitter, looks up Xavier Tillman to see what everybody else is saying about me. Cause yeah, it's good. That's a trap. Yeah, yeah you don't want to get down there. I deleted Twitter. I brought it back for like a day, and I was like, I know. I finally realized why I didn't have Twitter anymore. Yeah. Because I just kept scrolling to see what people were saying about me, and I'm like, I can't. Toxic. Keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like in your head. Yeah. yeah. I listened to. Uh, Oh, that Conor McGregor interview he did on it with Tony Robbins. He was talking about external, internal. And he was saying a lot of athletes that once they make it or they get to a certain level of like success, whether it's just like they won something, like they win 60 games or like they get some clout on Instagram, right? They start that scrolling. Yeah. But also, like, you know, the, let the external interrupt the internal. And he talked about that's how he lost two of his biggest fights is that he let. You know, the outside world get in his head. He started blowing up, though. Conor McGregor started blowing up. Yeah. Even yeah. Positive and negative things going on. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, in that moment where he, when he, he got to that point, two, you know, two world championships, two different weight classes. Crazy. But, like, he didn't listen to anybody. It was just internal, his team. But he got some money. Yeah. He had a little fame. And he's like, oh, Conor McGregor's bad for, for the UFC. Conor McGregor is racist. Conor, like, yeah. all that stuff gets in his head. And then he, he's trying to focus on the fight by the time he's worried about people's opinions, mm-hmm. how he look, and then, you know, he starts losing. And, it's, you know, it's funny how you know how you bring that up, but, like, have, staying locked in and staying focused because I thought that was super powerful that, you know, because, like, someone like me, like, you know, or even saying, like, we don't have that kind of pressure. Like, people not really, mm-hmm. we don't have haters, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and that is weird haters. If you go on, it's like, yo, yeah. quiet, this is snake, yeah. trash, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's never been in my life. It's on Twitter going crazy, uh, right? Yeah. It's funny, like, you know, to see the difference in, like, you know, not realizing that, like, you know, you're a human being, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I feel like once That's you a get, big problem, right, man. you get to that level of fame, people are not treating you like a human being anymore. That is real. <laughs> that is so real, real. like. You know, obviously, I love to make people happy and stuff like that. So, a picture and an autograph is nothing. Yeah. But, like, when people come out of nowhere, like, hey, tell me, you better win next year. I'm like, bro, what the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm with my family. We at you double trying to get something to eat. You're going to just get that across the. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> It's so real, like, and it's crazy because if you re- react negatively to that, then you're all over the news because mm-hmm. it's like Tuman goes wild on fan or something. It's yeah, like, it's like okay, well, yeah, I don't just run up to a random person and say that, like, yeah. you better do this, this, and this, even mm-hmm. if it's positive or if it's negative, you know. But like, when you get to a certain platform, you definitely feel like an animal. You don't feel like a person anymore, just because people don't respect. Does you. your daughter realize what you do? Yeah, yeah, she's too young. No, you're, you're still his daddy, right? She's really like daddy. <laughs> she, she just likes Sparty. Sparty. She likes coming to the game to see Sparty. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. so crazy, man. That's I feel like so cool. I always uh, you know, think about the kids of athletes or like famous people and like when does Jaden Smith realize his dad is Will Smith? <laughs> like, what, like, yeah. like what happens? Like then you do you start doing just water? Like yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. dad's Will Smith, we should we should start a water company. Start, right? <laughs> yeah. Like when does it hit you, right? I mean yeah. he he was in movies early on though. Yeah, what Karate Kid? Yeah, yeah Karate, Karate Kid. kid. And, oh, uh, Institute of Happiness. Yo, that's one of the best. Oh, movies that out. was actually yeah. I, I forgot. gotta, that I gotta see that again. I saw a little little clip of it. Will Smith posted it on Instagram, and I'm like, yo, yeah, I that's a classic. Yeah, that one back. Man, Will Smith was in his bag at that point. Seven pounds. That movie, <laughs> man. I didn't see Seven Pounds until what, what, last year or two years ago. Last that's year, a, that's seven a, pounds. That's a tearjerker, man. That'll get you. What's that? Is he's versatile, man. 
Do you ever think you can eclipse Denzel Washington, though? For Will Smith? Backup? Yeah. Or did he ready? I was going to say, I mean, I would almost think that yeah, they're on the same I think level. He did. Like, I, think, I think he really? did. I think he has. I think yeah. he has. Through you all his that? early work, I think he has. But it ain't like Denzel. It's like, ah, Denzel. It's yeah. like Will Smith and Denzel. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably, they're probably both on the same tier for me, you know? For real. I mean, Will Smith does, I feel like Will Smith's more versatile for sure. Because, mm-hmm. like, you that. put Denzel in uh, yeah, like Fresh Denzel. Prince, it's not funny, you know what I mean? Like, he's he's serious. I think Denzel has played the same role in a couple movies. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. He does this. Yeah. Like, yeah. When he's still that like cool uncle that you want in your mm-hmm. life, right? You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Like I'm down to have Denzel Washington as an uncle. Do you have an uncle like that in real life? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, uncles uh, are cool uh, guys. They're listening to this, like, yeah. but uh, you know, they're not Denzel cool. I feel like nah. they're cool people. Most though. people yeah. aren't. I mean, that's no. a level. There's that's levels to that. Yeah, and yeah. my family's Jamaican, so like it's different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So they're like they're like chill, but they'll hit you with like Jamaican proverb, like oh, weird cool. stuff, like. One thing that's big is like you can't listen, you must feel. Like and that was always before whooping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like You it, can't listen, you must feel. You can't listen, you must feel. Go into that. As you're getting like smacked. So you can't listen, right? If someone tells you like, Hey, don't put your don't do that. So you're not listening, right? So you right. you can't listen, you must feel. So it means that like every action has a reaction or consequence, gotcha. right? So like Obviously, before that, right? like, yo, I told you not to do that. I'm gonna be dragged now because you can't listen. You must feel. But in life too, is like if you don't listen or you don't like heed or you don't mm. like take your time, like you get like that's how the world reacts. I feel like and like mm. they're like these deep, really deep parables. You know, like yeah. another one's like um, cocoa by cocoa fills basket, right? And cocoa like like coconut, whatever, or, or cocoa bean, like saying that little by little you can you can get to where you're going. But everyone's yeah. so like everyone's so like rushing. Yeah. Right. So they'll just drop this stuff on you when you're like a kid. And you're like, what? Yeah. Are you and then like ten about? years later, you take it up. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. like your free pa- your free paper uh, soon bun, like your free time, like when I was on vacation. Like, what is that one you said? Free pup. Your free paper soon bun. Uh, which is like your free time is like like or paper like your money whatever it is is like is limited. So like I'm like family vacation, not family vacation, but summer vacations or whatever. Like my aunt used to say that to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? But then we got a week before school, so she was like, couldn't wait for me like <laughs> to get my ass back to school and like being bad around the house. Yeah. But he's just like, yeah, that's my uncles and my family. They drop like random little like gems. All yeah, you just be yeah. like, yeah. You, you carry that stuff with you, and then like you, you get further in life, you're like, oh, that's a key like thing with like. Parents, like I remember growing up like that. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. As soon as I had my daughter, I'm like, y'all definitely. Knew what you're about. <laughs> How often do you go for them for like parenting advice and all that? Uh, I'm sure it was more at the beginning. It was definitely more at the beginning. Uh, before she was born, I just had questions that I needed to answer. Like, mm-hmm. how do you handle? They're basically different scenarios and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like different, like. My dad didn't let me hang out with my friends a lot growing up. And I was like, like I was like, man, that probably hurt my relationship with a bunch of my friends. Yeah. But I didn't realize, like, look at, looking at where I'm at, I never let outside stuff distract me. Yeah. Because, like, mm. all I know is, like, basketball and school and, like, my family. Like, yeah. that, was, that was my core. Yeah. Like, basketball, school, and the family. Yeah. And, um, like, like, nowadays... I hang out with my teammates when I can. But even then, like, I'm still focused on, like, my core. I never let, oh, man, you know, we're going to hang out after practice, so let me not worry about practice. Like, no. Like, I was always yeah, like, man, locked in on wow. what I had to do. It's a good mentality. I mean, it shows in the game. Like, your progression ever since you got there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Who's been, like, a role model for you so far? Or, I guess, previously on the team? Uh, Has anyone kind of taken you under their wing? It was Tum. Tum took a took my basically my whole family under his wing when we first got there, you know, because college was a scary thing. A lot of people were like, yeah, I don't know how you and Tamir are going to handle it because, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of girls up there and mm. you're going to run into a lot of temptations. But Tom really helped me, like, we had Bible studies and just helped me just devote myself to Tamir, like, literally, mm. like, so I didn't think of any outside distractions. Like, yeah. I just focused on her every day, every time I saw her, even when I didn't see her. Yeah. And with that, like, made our relationship so much stronger. Yeah. Talk about talk. Oh, can we talk about religion on this podcast? Yeah, we can. All right, talk about uh, your faith and um, what you do daily to stay, you know, motivated with it. Because we were just joking about earlier. You know, I'd be making excuses why I haven't been in church in a minute. I've been in church in like, you know, but you know, not saying you have to go to church 
to believe in God or you know or mosque or whatever whoever listening whatever you believe in right? right I just my my belief is that like people should believe in something like it's hard for me to trust people who don't believe in anything mm-hmm. um, even if it's not even themselves right so like for me it's like oh I can't trust someone who doesn't believe in anything <laughs> like you have you have no compass right yeah. like mm-hmm. alright so you believe in yourself cool let's say you believe in grass cool like I'm not gonna like I believe in God right and I'm not gonna like you know unless you want to I'm not gonna push it on you but um, it's just like you know, talk about your faith. Like for me too, like I haven't been in church in a while, but you know, I, I do my little things like, you know, I read my Bible at least, you know, in the morning, for like 15 minutes. I try, I try to stay up with it. I think mm-hmm. it just keeps like, like you're saying like that locked in focus. So, um, talk about like your faith in church and how big that was in growing up for you. Uh, well growing up, you know, I probably like you, I didn't like going to church as a yeah, kid because yeah. it felt like it was forced, right? Yeah. You just, Obviously, wait. Do you know we went to the same church? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I saw you, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, going out, I was like, man, like I could have slept in on this Sunday. Like, right, um, man. I hadn't slept man. in on this Sunday until I got to college. <laughs> <laughs> but every so that's day, what it is, though. I feel yeah. like you just yeah. touched on something. You the just separation. Has, you listen, my whole life never got to slip in on Sundays because we always had to go to church, and then you go to black church. You probably go for two services. Mm-hmm. And you're, you like, like you get there for the nine o'clock. Yeah. And like, okay. Let's stay for the eleven. Oh. <laughs> like, my mom just the, it, it's, it's only from nine to ten, yeah. right? So yeah. like, okay, I'm out. Let's go mm-hmm. home. Right. No. No, I'm gonna talk from ten to ten forty five. It's about to start. We might as well stay. Uh, what? <laughs> yes. So you go from nine a.m. Yeah. Eleven o'clock goes to like two, three o'clock. Especially if pastor's trying to go off. So from nine to three. So we're tortured going up. Yeah. Nine to three. Your whole, <laughs> like whole Sunday's ruined. Yeah. You're just like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sitting there hungry. So sitting sitting there hungry. hungry. Yeah. Just like hungry. Man. So like yeah. And then um, I guess like for me, faith or. My religion is all about faith. Yeah. It's all about knowing the unknowing yeah. or trusting the unknowing mm-hmm. for me personally. Like, I don't know this next step of my life after this season, you know. Obviously, I'm locked in on the season, but if it goes good, what if I got a chance to go to the league? Yeah. But I don't know, like, mm-hmm. how that next chapter is going to be for me mm-hmm. personally. So religion to me is all about just having faith that mm-hmm. God has got me yeah. through any bad situation that I'm going through mm-hmm. and through the good situations too. Yeah, yeah. that's big. That's yeah. powerful. You know, um, there's a, what, what's that line in the Bible? Faithful that works is dead, right? So you believe and then you put in the work in, locked into the season. I think it'd be amazing if you go to the league next year. I think that'd be hypothetical, right? You don't want to live too much in the future, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to psych yourself out. Right. But yeah. I think that's like super huge. Like, that's so crazy to me, right? That the opportunity the is opportunity there. Is there. Yeah. And, like, you know, the things you can do once you get there and businesses. And you see, like, you know, I think like basketball has. You know, chain like you see LeBron, for example, like he's built. Now he's, he's, he's built. way more than an athlete. Way mm-hmm. and like I love that point, model, right? and like hate yeah. when people hate on him. Like no, like now Jordan. Okay, he's a legend, right? Like your stories about Jordan. He was at the club the <laughs> night before and dropped 40, 50. <laughs> the right. guy like that. Yeah. So like, like you, you, you could definitely tell, like, because LeBron takes it super seriously and he's that great. Jordan kind of took it seriously and he was that great. So imagine if Jordan had that same work ethic as LeBron. You could argue that he was better, but aside from that. Um, you know that 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 blueprint he's building. Cause I'm like looking at LeBron. I'm like, you know, like like being that having that kind of clout right in your brain. Yeah, and you still want to go and still try to be a good person. Yeah, like try to be a good person. Still like care about your family. Like, bro, I mean, we said it on this podcast before. He's like the definition of a role model. Like, yeah, if you're gonna point to someone to like be, it's him Mm -hmm. easily. I mean, we talk about him all the time, but. It's like not even all the businesses he runs, it seems like, are for profit. Like the school he opened up in Akron, that's just like for the community, for the love of the game and the love of kids. Yeah. So, I mean, when you when you try to wrap your head around it, it's so hard. You know, oh my God, he's in a movie. He's producing movies, <laughs> shows, uh, Nike, shows yeah. commercials. Yeah. You're like, okay, well, Trading how do you do it? When yeah. are you working out? Like, we yeah, doing I mean, all when this, do you like, have time to do all that stuff? Yeah. And, it's just a process like year by year he does like something little something little something little mm-hmm. yeah. to when he's 34 years old as of being in the league for like 15 16 years he can open a school now yeah. you know yeah. so like for me personally like I want to give back to Grand Rapids but I can't do it right away like it's got to be like little camps here little camps right. here little camps here little camps here and then maybe have my own gym mm-hmm. come the year 16 right. or 10 whatever that's right. the biggest thing when you start encountering success like you start realizing um 
And it's such a weird concept that you got to be like kind of like selfish before you can be selfless. Mm-hmm. And that was like the hardest lesson I've learned probably through my like journey too is just like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I can't bring everybody with me right now. I'm not at that right. level. But in your brain, you'd be like, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. But then yeah. you're like, wait a minute. Like, I ain't got that much money. I can't even feed. Like, I can yeah. feed you, but then I can't <laughs> eat. <laughs> exactly, you know? Yeah. So I feel like a lot of people see, probably see you when you, when you get to the league, they'll be like, oh, Hey, bro, let's do it. Like, oh, so so you remember that hey, one time? Yeah, 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 you gotta give me some time. Give me like 10 years, bro. Let's see if you still want to do that. Yeah, right. 10 years from now. Yeah. You just want to save this because I got it right now. But I'm yeah. trying to save it for my kids' kids. Yeah. Proper. You're really so, I mean, you're probably already dealing with that now, but do you deal with the stereotype of once you get big, everyone wants to come around and get a piece of the plate, you know? Are you dealing with that yet, or mm-hmm. has it started to happen? I haven't had a. Uh, like our person. weird dudes in your DMs asking you to come to the podcast and come on the show. <laughs> You're the only one, sorry. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> first for everything. <laughs> um, no. A lot worse. of my people. Dude, can you just like come out of my podcast and tell my basketball? Yeah, that's how dude? I said it. <laughs> Send him a video. Sick. He said, he said, it's perfectly fine if you don't. And I was like, let me see. <laughs> Looking at Instagram. Oh, no, he's Shout out to Sam for go tripping. Man. <laughs> <laughs> It cost a couple bags, but we may have it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, don't say it on the podcast. <laughs> Never mind. For next it's season. free. It's, it's free. free. Say. Say. It's free. But, so are pleasure. you dealing with like people hitting you up and, yo, let's start a business or no. follow me on Instagram, all that stuff? Uh, follow me on Instagram. Shout out. get that a lot. I'm sure. Uh, shout outs. But it's weird, though, because if it's a random dude, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I don't yeah. care. I don't have no attachments to you. Yeah. Right. But like my boys, you know... Um, I'll shout them out anytime they ask for a shout out because that ain't no big deal to me. That's those are my boys, those are my inner circle. Yeah, uh, but nobody yet uh, has been talking about like businesses. Like, hey, when you get there, we got to do this. We got to do this. Yeah. We got to do this. And I'm happy because I'd have to say like, yo, mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta. I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm not keep my head yet. down the hoop for a little bit. Right. And then when I'm established, you know, hopefully if I get established in the NBA, yeah, then start my business marketing and getting out there and yeah. try to get with different companies and do yeah this that, and the third. Do you see that being in the line? Like you, you could see yourself getting involved with different businesses and all mm-hmm. that. I, yeah. I'm already. I'm thinking about like. I want to do like cam- I want to do cameos in like movies, like little yeah. like LeBron. What is that? Um, oh, I was just LeBron look, was in the like, one with Amy Poehler. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to yeah. do like little little stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I see that. Show my face in a, in a movie. You ever seen That'd that be movie? cool. Uh, yeah. So like acting and stuff. That's what yeah. inspires you. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't even inspire me, but that's just something. Hey, like. I'm in a movie. Yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a movie. Yeah. I got some free time. I worked out in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Be in a movie. Man, yeah. it must be nice, though. I, uh, <laughs> it must be nice. Um, I was at the car dealership uh, yesterday. Wow, you trying to stunt, huh? Chill out. No, not even like that. But um, I met one of these uh, car dealers, and he knows uh, Devin Booker or whatever. Mm. And he was talking about, you know, now he's, you know, he just got signed that contract, 158 mil. Man. But like he was saying, like how crazy from seeing him being some AAU player that used to come because his dad was a car dealer, so yeah. some AAU player, right? Like they hung out, he would show love to the kid. That's like his boy or whatever. Yeah. And then like boom, boom, and now he's in the league. Yeah. One hundred fifty-eight yeah. mil. mil. That's life changing, life changing, life changing that's, money. That's generation changing. Right. Yeah. That's like Nike sponsorships. Who, who, like you know who sponsorship? <laughs> Like, so like, that's that. his NBA contract, right? Yeah. Right. So he's straight, he's great, or whatever, whatever. He's just talking about, you know, like how he's still grounded, he's still the same kid. He's got a little more, he just got a little extra money. Now it's, he, he's a little bit different. Like he's buying jets now and like, yeah, <laughs> he's buying yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But like, you know, it's like he, he's still texting and he's like, what's up, man? Like, obviously, he's like locked in, he's busy and whatever, but like, right. he always hits him back. And it's, um, you know, he's talking about how his circle. Or his team around him was like the people he grew up with and like the people that he trusts. And it's like he was like, you know, every athlete or just people around him, like, you need that, right? Like Yeah. If you don't have anybody to to tell you when you're on bull, yeah. you're gonna fall down right away. Mm. Too much yes men around you. Yeah. No, I don't I don't got any yes men, not even my wife. <laughs> Man. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. good though. That's good. I always tell people don't hype me up, yo. Because you don't let me get my head. Man, yeah. don't, don't hype me up. Don't <laughs> hype me up. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, so I tweet and some stuff. Yeah. Like, feel like, feeling myself. Feeling trash, bro. I'm like, don't, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't hype me up. Yeah. Start feeling myself. Start acting out of pocket. Yeah. 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 So who's who's the person in your life or the people that check you the most, like keep you in line? My little sister. She just texted me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 
a little sister Maddie, Tamia, my mom, um, Tamia's little brother. <laughs> the whole family involved. Uh, Parker, my older brother, my older brother just right above me. RJ, my oldest brother. Ben and Tony are like my hype man though. Like, oh, I, yeah. I rock with them because they hype me. <laughs> up. Yeah, they hype me up. Uh, Checks and balances. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, works out. Chaz. So you got a long list. Yeah, yeah I, like my family, the different people are different. You know, growing up, my dad was my hype man because you know, as a, as a kid, you need somebody. Otherwise, you're just gonna go out into the world like, okay, am I actually gonna make it? My dad was always like, oh, you're the king. You you own this. You mm. you the man type of thing. So I walked into gyms like. My dad got me. I'm cool. Yeah. I'm better than you. That's what he said. So I am. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, that's my attitude. That's what he yeah. said. Yo, yeah. talk about that as, because you're a parent. And we just joked around about that. Like, because, you know, Sam's parents are like super supportive. Mm-hmm. And like, you need that as a kid. Right? I feel like that's like the biggest edge, right? Like, you know, you may, when you're just growing up, you're like an awkward, like, you're 12 years old, you're taller than everybody, right? And then just kind of like, your dad's like, yo, you're, you're the greatest. <laughs> you're like, like, oh, what? Like, what? Yeah, imagine yeah. that instead of like, you're like, like, you so confidence. clumsy. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> like, I couldn't imagine my life without like supportive parents. My life would not be what it is without supportive parents because when I, whenever I went through something bad or when I had news, hey, I'm having a kid, like, yeah. Yeah. they were so supportive of it. You know, they're yeah. like, okay, we're going to get through this. You know, but like, what's crazy is they could have been like, yo, pack it up. You got to work out all these <laughs> and mm. just be done. Like, you're not hooping no more. But they really could have said that yeah. you had to be a man and and stop playing basketball and stop having fun like you yeah. need to just and they're like no like we're gonna get through this we're gonna help you take care of her that's so you know, powerful uh, for what the end of our my senior year they live with me at my mom's house oh wow yeah so it was that's so powerful so they responded well to yeah. you had a kid and all that yeah yeah it, I don't think like we even we were so nervous to tell them like we're just like okay like, I imagine yeah they're gonna kill us you know. <laughs> Um, but no, they were just really like accepting. My mom was mad at first, you know, obviously. Of course, like, yeah. Dang, like you, you were kind of on a roll. But no, she she definitely uh, helped me a lot. Yeah. Not only with like money, but like with advice mm-hmm. and the, and with taking Yanni for a weekend so me and Tamia could be like college students. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. big. Yeah, that's so powerful. So like, what, what kind of music you listen to before a game? Or do you listen to music? Ooh, that's a good question. Are you, are you like, are, are you meditating? Are you doing yoga? Like what? So I, Drink I, kombucha? Like what's your... <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been like watching a lot of like, like not necessarily, like different stuff on ESPN, but yeah. like, but on YouTube on like what different players do, right? Yeah. And Kobe was like, it's different every, every game. It's yeah. a feel. It's a, like, it's a vibe kind yeah. of thing. So, mm-hmm. Sometimes he's like, I need to get motivated. Let me turn on something that I know is going to hype me up. Yeah. Or sometimes he's already so excited for the game. I don't even need music. I just got to just kind of chill like this because I'm already ready to go. Yeah, really if is. I get music, I'm going to be overly excited and, yeah. and come in the game and do something crazy. So it's kind of just a vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I'm listening to Chris Brown album. Really? Yeah. Indigo. That's a long yeah, album. It's, it's a long album. Yeah. But I don't know why I mess with it, but I just mess with it heavy. I mean, hey, there's a reason why he's at where he's at, man. Yeah. Chris yeah. Breezy. All right, let's talk about this for a second because um, shout out to Bert. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing the shout outs again. <laughs> but uh, Bert and I had a crazy argument about Chris Brown. And like he was like, he, he said something like, you know, like, oh, he's big as Michael Jackson or whatever. Or like his crazy impact, right? And I was like, yeah. But, you know, he had an instant with Rihanna. And I feel like as soon as he did that, like, for me, as like as, as a Chris Brown fan, like didn't Mike have an incident? Yeah, he had a feel with the kids and all yeah, that. A lot of I mean, scandals. But listen, had. okay, so yeah. <laughs> have you ever watched the Z's and Zari special on uh-huh. Netflix yet? He talks about this. He's talking about like R. Kelly. He's like clapping you down with R. Kelly, and like everyone clapped, right? And he's like clapping you down with like um, Michael Jackson. Like a couple people clapped, mm. uh, and it's like, like okay, where do you draw the line? Right, because I, I feel like you you compare, you know, and it's probably not. I'm not gonna sound like the best off from saying this, but the Rihanna situation with Chris Breezy and then the Michael situation, like which one is, like if they're, if they're both, both are true, which one is yeah. like kind of right? It's hard to rate what's worse. I mean, but, it's a kid, but it's a woman at the same. But like, not nah, the, the biggest difference is that there's proof that Chris Brown did what he did, right? right? And people still debate to this day if it. Michael Breezy did anything. Did you know right. what I mean? So that's the biggest thing, and it, that goes back to. Um, and Michael has like probably more hits. 
Yeah, I mean, like you can't make thriller. I think you can't make thriller. Like, yeah, like Chris Brown is a like, superstar. Like, but I mean, have you heard Kiss Kiss? Him and T Pain. Yeah, uh, is that a hit? <laughs> that is it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Chris <laughs> Brown. <laughs> like Chris Brown is a superstar, but you like Michael Jackson was like it's like Beyonce level. Like you know, there's a difference to me between Chris Brown and Beyonce stardom wise. Yeah, you know. Well, P- yeah, Beyonce's like huge. Yeah, like, like I mean, okay, okay. Star. So let's talk tier. So like, yeah, what tier would you put Beyonce on? The t- whatever the top tier is. She's top tier. So in just her genre of all time. What, what, just, 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 just like right now, right now, just right now. Yeah, I mean, she got to be okay. Like, so we're just going. Off. We were talking about this last week. Yeah, Ed Sheeran Ed is Sheeran's like the highest really rating artist <laughs> on a yearly basis. Right? But How, what, was you, what was the number? What was the number? For a second. What was the number? He goes four hundred thirty-two million on tour. What? Last year. I guess his story is just him with a guitar. Yeah, so that's all his. Right? So, but you like, Ed Sheeran's not that big, but you think about Shape of You, you know, Shape of You was like, huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's from London and they're playing Shape, well, obviously he's from London, but I was just saying, like, yeah. oh, that's, that's not that crazy, actually. But, like, it's just funny, like, you know, you hear it here, but he's like, wait a minute. And then, like, you look at numbers, Jay-Z and Beyonce combined only, and only <laughs> the 257 mil. But, like, that's huge still. I thought they were billionaires. No, but like uh, their tour, they like grow. The, oh. the money they made from touring last year. How yeah. much do you know how much Chris Brown made? No, he probably made like 30, 40 mil. That's all you think? I don't know. I, would I don't know sure. personally. Uh, has he been on tour lately? I don't know. I'm sure he's tour. touring the new album. Yeah, he's yeah. probably going to tour his new album. Since he yeah. hasn't came in yet. But like yeah. compared, like, we would say Drake is probably like the biggest hip hop artist right now. Mm-hmm. His, tour, yeah. his tour with me was only, only gross 80 mil. Are you serious? So 80 mil to 400, like, and then 200. Yeah, okay. Well, so perspective, right? I feel like Beyonce and Jay-Z just charge a lot too, though. Like They're like, look, <laughs> yeah. y'all know who we are. Yeah. I mean, Drake oh, is... facts. I mean, but, I mean, Drake and the Migos, I feel like those tickets got to be expensive too. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but I, I don't know. Maybe they're just not, hey, like, this is $1,000 a ticket even if you want to sit up high. I feel yeah, like that's how Beyonce yeah. and Jay-Z Just to get are. in, like, yeah. Mm. That's a oh, good point. point. Like, just I mean, that just plays on how much is Ed Sheeran charging for them tickets, you know? Not the, other, the other thing is that he could be doing more shows because he's one person. So he doesn't have to like line up everything else, you know. Yeah. And he's not as much of a business mogul as like Jay Z is, where Jay Z just, he just focuses on his music. Ed who, Ed, yeah, him. yeah, yeah. So like Jay has to worry about the businesses and all like title and all that. Yeah. Where I'm sure Ed Sheeran just like goes to the studio, makes music, and then can tour. Well, he said he like, he goes away for a year. He goes to like a random place and makes an album. That's where he back. makes the album. Dang. Yeah. He really locked in his so music. So going back to the tears, we didn't even. Talk oh about yeah, so, so Beyonce. So. In my opinion, it's got to be up there. I guess Ed Sheeran then, if he's really doing these numbers, like, but like in my personal tier, I wouldn't put him up there. Me either. You know? but I, is, <laughs> is Drake up there, like, in the tiers? Yeah, I, yeah. personally, I would put Drake like up there. He's in the top tier. You know? Yeah, of upper echelon artists. Upper yeah. echelon. And okay. then probably like Justin Bieber because he does numbers. Everything he drops. And just because it's iconic, right? Like, yeah, it's it's his name now. I don't even think it's music. That's how I feel about Chris Brown numbers. personally. That's Chris oh. Brown just has to like put out something. Yeah, and, and like, it's it's Chris Brown, yeah. so you're just gonna listen to it. Listen That's to true. It. It's Drake, Drake, Drake too. too. Yeah, yeah, I guess there is that like bit of artist that you will listen to the song. Just yeah, those guys like Jay Z, Beyonce, Drake, Chris Brown. If you see somebody, Kendrick Lamar, um, Kanye, probably Kanye. Yeah. Like you see their names out there, you're just gonna listen to it because that's how big. That's true. Name, so I'm curious, what's your list? J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake. Who you put at number one? Who's at number two? Who's Whoa, at number three? Cole. At number one? Yeah, Cole's number one. Respect. Just because he just he speaks real stuff. Respect. He's coming for it too. He's a storyteller, man. Yeah, yeah. and I'm and I mess with that. Especially like when I had a kid and yeah. he talked about having a kid. I'm like, oh yeah, that's my life. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he lays life. everything out. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So J. Cole. And then Drake, because I grew up, Drake was just classic for me when yeah. I was growing up, especially the Never Was yeah, the Same. Our age, yeah, our age, like, he's not even. Yeah. Um, and then Kendrick at the three no. spot. Oh. Kendrick is down. I'm putting Ooh. Future right after Drake. Wow. Oh. Still. Yeah. We Pot had this twist. talk the other day. We were talking about the, the mystique of Future has kind of declined lately. Because his last thing he just dropped? I'm, in my opinion, these last I think you three just have haven't be, been high. Well, okay, so you didn't mess with the wizard? Not no, really, bro. Not really, bro. I'm not I don't lie. think you're not. You're just not a... Like, like I was a back. devoted future fan, regardless of what he put out. Yeah. Like, it was at that point where, like, I'm just going to listen to like, it. Like, core like, future or, like, future future? Like, that's, that's like, I'm like, I love future on the future. 
Right, like, <laughs> like but I don't feel I love his projects that much. Nah. But he does the numbers though. Yeah. No, I mess with I mess with his projects. I mess with his features. Anything that future, yeah. if, if future is on the song, day. if yeah. he just said like, like yeah. yeah, like ah oh, <laughs> man, that was a hit. <laughs> That's like, I, mess with future. I don't know That's like the future. way I look at it Like Dirty Sprite 2 And then he did the collab With Drake And then I just feel like Ever since then like, What? In my opinion bro he's To me personally I don't even met, Like Dirty Sprite 2 Obviously I know every song to it But like I don't really like You don't consider that His top Like no, his best work like, No 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 uh, Hendrix to me personally Is his top His top music Hendrix And then That was the like Wizard. Three years ago Yeah, yeah. Hendrix yeah. Something yeah, like that two, three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay Okay, we're all allowed to have our own opinions. Yeah. So I, that's I, three, I and then future. what else? Who else is on the top five? I say Drake, or J Cole, Drake, Future. future. Uh, uh, it's it's only the album. It's only the um, Love Letter to You three, Trippy Red. Really, wow. Trippy Red's in the top five. Listen, that album. That's the that album. Love of that Letter album? to You three. Okay. That's it. Listen, Trippy Red. He's he's weird. He yeah, looks weird. weird. He's weird, but like, yo, he has hooks and he has bars. His hooks are real, though. He really good. Like, yo, man. Yeah. To pay yeah. Like, bro. Yeah, his hooks are hard. How, like, how do you even come up with that? I'm that beat. Right. Like, uh, to the man, okay, <laughs> okay. But like, even thinking that like, you know, he was supposed to be on God's plan. What? Really? Yeah, but like, he was messing around. He was supposed to be, Drake wanted him on God's plan, bro. I didn't know that. Whoa. Bro, that song's at like a billion views right now. That would have skyrocketed. He messed up. I don't know why he was playing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been your best verse ever. Straight, huh? That that better have been his best verse ever if he was about to get on God's plan. That's crazy. He was probably scared. Like, oh, dang. I cannot mess this up. Yeah, that's true. But I've been listening to Red a lot. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, some songs are like, okay. But like, his hooks and he has like his melodies. Like he was like put a song. I think out of the, like the new generation, he's like one of the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think his like the way he's branded is not helping him out. Like they're not branding him as like an artist. What are they branding him as? Like this, like you know, goth, sad, emo, rap mm-hmm. kid. Mm-hmm. Which I feel like is part of his like energy. Mm-hmm. But like when you put him in that world, like you're not expecting good music. You're expecting like hype. You're expecting like a, like you know. Yeah. I think they put them yeah, as like, yo, true. like, like how, how YBM Cordae came on the scene. Yeah. And they put Triple Red, like, the kind of same way. His own image, of course, like, do his thing. But, like, you look at YBM Cordae, you're, like, looking for some real music. You're looking for some a young kid with some content. Yeah. A good hook. He has more bars and melodies, I'd say, than, uh, than Triple Red has. But I think Triple Red is, is a hit maker just as good as Post or um, Tory Lanez. I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to argue with that. Like, yeah, yeah. Tory Lanez is definitely slept on. I feel like hundred percent. Yeah, for some reason he gets a lot of hate. He's just one of those guys. Like Russ, we were talking about Russ earlier. He's kind yeah. of the same way. Like, yeah, I don't. People know just kinda, they just kind of hate on him to hate on him. Yeah, like, Russ is a lyricist. Lyricist. He's, See, yeah, he know he knows what's up. And like, I saw, I was just talking to him about listening to Russ on that Joe Budden podcast, right? And mm-hmm. like, you know, because I, I got off Russ for a little bit. Like, I, I, remember, I remember I remember listening to Russ when he was dropping the songs on SoundCloud. Mm. <laughs> and I was in Travis City this time, so this was, a few, this was years back. I'm like, yo, Russ is, like, hot. Right. Yeah. Even when he's listening he to Russ sing, all the time, he, he can, can sing. Rap, and he got together. big, and I feel like uh, I wanted, like, like um, something different from him. I wanted to work with other producers. Like, like I've heard him mix, master, and produce. Like, he always says his own music. I was like, you don't want to hear him on, like, a, like, a different beat. Like, yeah. like you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, like, what you can do for it, right? Right. But then you can't like when you start getting all this bad press. I'm like, yo, Russ is like. What was he getting bad press by? I didn't see. There's like people like saying people like hate his personality, his arrogance. Like, 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 oh, yeah. I mean, that's how we that's how we talking in the songs. Like, I don't need nobody. Like, I'm good. Yeah, it was good. Self made. Like, okay. Yeah. I mean, I get that, but yeah, you got to talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we talk about it all the time. Like, Logic always reminding people that he's biracial. Like, right. people just get annoyed of it eventually. Mm-hmm. You know. But it's, I think it's your truth, right? And like, yeah. you, gotta story to you gotta be true to your truth. And he probably yeah. bought into a story, you know. But listen to the interview. Like, I saw like why he was kind of like, you know, why like he's like that. Like, he really like made ninety four songs before he hopped off. Yeah. But like, you cannot make ninety four songs <laughs> and then not brag about yo like. I made 94 songs and no one listened to my shit. Yeah. But he did Nobody. About, yeah. But I continue to do it. Right? I put that drop, pull the trick, whatever. That's, right? that's, that's faith yeah. and that's pull, and that's that's a lot of faith and dedication. Because think mm-hmm. about it. You made 94 songs. After song one, well, maybe not song one. After song 10, if yeah. you don't get no love, you're like, okay, bro, this is not for me. I got to yeah. go do something else. Yeah. yeah. But 94, 94 songs. His dad was just believing in like your craft. Like, yeah. That's mm-hmm. crazy. His dad company 
goes up. Like his dad tries to start a company, didn't work. His mom's not working, so like he's under pressure. He's like taking care of shit. Man. So like I see why he's like when you learn that, then you see like why he's out here like yo, you can do anything you want. Like fuck everybody. Like have that mindset. Like mm. that's you know? really what it is. And a lot of people are like, okay, well I'm working at a factory job. Okay, yeah. well the amount of time and the amount of hours that you put in that factory job you become the manager of the factory job yeah. and after a couple of years of be doing that you're going to become the owner of the factory like it yeah. takes time you takes just time. have to believe it you gotta be patient gotta be that's patient that's something I've always talked about with like athletes like people love to say oh hey, if I was LeBron I would work I would work 80 hours a week like yeah it's easy to be 80 hours in the gym if you're making millions but it's like you're you're working at wherever you're at and you don't even go to work like mm-hmm. you no call no show so like, do you really work hard, or are you just saying like you would if you made a lot a of lot money? A lot of people think like, like there's a reason people are where they are. Like, obviously, you say you're God gifted, right? Yeah. But like, God gave you talent, but God didn't literally pick you up and make you run to work out. He right. didn't lift your arms up to lift the weights. You mm-hmm. know what right. I'm saying? Like that. People still put in work. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think like, like I know six eight people who are. Chilling. Yeah. Like, I don't like to play basketball. Uh, that, that's not what they do. And they don't really have ambition to be the best they can be. They just kind of chill. Yeah, so, right. like, my thing is, whatever you're doing, if you have ambition, it'll take you crazy far. Yeah. Talk about that work ethic for a little bit, in your opinion. Like, you just touched on it. Because I, I think I run into it. You run into it a lot. Like, yo, I work my face off every single day. Mm-hmm. Like, Talk about that, like you being able to put the work in. Like, what kind of what kind of thing? I know you said like it's easy for you, right? Because you have your priorities. But what are some things you do that like, when you're not feeling the workout? Like, how do you get locked in? Like, what what's your reminder? Is it your family? Like, what 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 are those things that you look at? Like, um, we're all well, human, you know. <clears throat> so what? It was going. It was a period after my se- after senior year basketball season was over. I had like a a month before I had to go on campus at Michigan State. Yeah. And, you know, season's over. So it's literally a month of doing nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or you do whatever you want. Yeah. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do. How do I get motivated to go to the gym? Because nobody's telling me. Because the coach is like, well, yeah, we'll see you in May. And my high school coach is like, yeah, I had a great season. So nobody's pushing me to get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom is working. She's worried about my little sister now. My season's over. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, like, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And I watched a lot of motivational videos yeah. to get up. Yeah. I'm talking like that was uh, work, man. Et like et the et hip hop bleacher. Yeah, shout out et man. man. Which one is it? So if you can hear, you said et the bleacher. What hip hop? Et the hip hop yeah. bleacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, those I watched videos, a lot of his videos. Mm. Those videos make you lock in real quick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I literally had to, in essence, for my motivation come from the bottom. Like I had no motivation after my mm-hmm. senior year, and then I just kept watching videos and watching videos and watching videos. And then I just kind of got inspired after mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when I saw people who weren't inspired, yeah. I got even more inspired because I'm like, a lot of people don't really want it. Ooh, especially you could take happens. it. You could take it if people don't want it. Yeah. So, so then I just kept going. Like, okay, a lot of people don't want it. I could try to help them, but if you don't want the help, then I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, that's yeah. powerful. Talk about momentum. How do you how do you keep your momentum going? What do you mean? Like, so you know, you were you didn't have any motivation, right? And you got kickstarted. Now, obviously, in a month, you start you start you're in. You know you're at state, so they got other people motivating you. But you know, I talk about this idea of momentum. I feel like a lot of people talk about it. Like once the ball gets rolling, like the snowball, mm-hmm. it can turn to like you know a big. It's ball. a habit, right? So how, what what are tips and tricks to keep the momentum? Because I always tell, since my friends that make music, right? They'll drop a song, and I'm like, yo, you gotta keep making music. Yeah, you can't wait for people to tell you how good it was. Yeah, you drop mm-hmm. your music, send it out there, get back yeah, in, and right. drop another one. Yeah. And they'll get a little clout, right? They may have like a hot song. Chill. And I'm like, yo, like, mm-hmm. can I tell them, like, it's so, like, once you get momentum, it's harder and harder to get back up because you have a new bottom. Mm-hmm. Right? That's why I look at it. Like, first, like, no one cares, right? Yeah. So you yeah. have zero. So, like, yeah. no one cares, but you must say you get, like, oh, three people care. Right? Now you gotta impress those three people again mm-hmm. to get one other person. Right, right. You're not like trying to, get, you're not going zero, like from zero to three. Yeah. You now you have to get back to three. And that's your new, that's your new zero. Right. And now you, get, now you have one. Got you. So I always like talk about like, you know, once you have the, you know, it swings your way and you have the momentum, like, like doing everything in your power to keep it going. Mm. Right? Like, you know, I'm at the point where I'm about to, I can feel my, I'm about to head now momentum thing. Like, it's like third gear for me is going to come up, especially for next year. And I'm really prepping people in my life, like, yeah, listen, 
Like, <laughs> you're not gonna hear from me. I'm about to turn up right now. Like, you're not, so you're not gonna see me. You're not gonna hear me. Yeah. You can call and text me, and I might respond when I'm done or yeah. when I got free time. But right. I'm about to really lock in on what I'm doing. But yeah, that, but also like that, and also like, yo, don't slow me down. Like, mm. if you're on my team and you're working with me, like, we only focusing on like moving the needle forward this year, like, because mm-hmm. like. No much work on time to get back up to this. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. not trying to. I'm not trying to do that. Start over. I'm not trying to start at 50 and that that be my new zero and have to get back to 50 again and then start over. That's how I was basketball. So like, uh, whatever. I'm at zero up until eighth grade. I got my first name. I got my name in the paper for the first time in eighth grade. So I'm at zero. Got my name in the paper. Yeah. Then I keep going. Get some notoriety in high school. Get some notoriety. Um, uh, Senior year, by senior year, I'm up. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm the man. Yeah. Go to Michigan State freshman year, play uh, eight minutes a game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, man, bro, this yeah. is like, like, like now I'm working for myself again. Like before, I was working to impress these people. Yeah. Like, oh man, like I'm the man. Yeah. Now ain't nobody see me play anyway. So yeah. like, no, okay, I gotta start over. I gotta yeah. restart my grind type right. of thing. Um. So that's what I did, and then. I'm starting to get some more cloud again. I'm yeah. starting to blow up again. So now I'm like, I don't want to go back. You don't want to yeah. go back. I don't want to go back to to not nobody know who I am and playing eight minutes a game. Yeah, like you can't now do that. I'm trying to start to be the man. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm trying to do. So. Yeah. That's powerful, man. That that's yeah. been I think it might like that's like the toughest thing. It's like the, it's easy when you when you're ready moving. Mm-hmm. But if you get a, any sense of slowing down, that's the hardest like you gotta shake. You get it up from twenty two minutes, right? And then like now you got ten, and you're like, wait a minute, we're too close to eight. <laughs> you know yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Have you ever dealt with? Uh, I mean, at least so far, have you ever dealt with the feeling of being burnt out? Like, have you had to take a week off, like for mental reasons and all that? Mm, well, I mean, we don't because this is not what we do at Michigan State. Even if you're burnt out, you're still you, you got to be there. Just you got to be there. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so I, I guess I haven't had the opportunity. Like maybe I might have been burnt out. Like yo, like I just, yeah. I'm here physically, but mentally, like I'm kind of sleeping right now. But right. Like, um, I don't think I've ever had ran into an opportunity when I could be burnt out and mm. actually just I'm gonna go chill. Chill out. Yeah. I've never had that yet. Yeah. Usually, like they'll give us breaks, and even in those breaks, I'll still be playing some type of basketball. Mm. Mm. It's probably you love it too, right? Yeah, it's so totally different for you. Like I mean, it's not different for you. Like, but it's, like it's kind of like. You, yeah. Your therapy is probably like maybe like the the most tedious thing. Maybe not saying it's for you, but like watching film or whatever, mm-hmm. or like doing some weird like weird workouts to get like your left stronger. But like you playing a game is probably like therapeutic. Like all right, cool. Like we're taking a break, but I'm still gonna do you know three on three real quick because it's fun for you, right? Like yeah, it's what you love. Like you said, it just kind of it eases me. Just because I've been doing it for so long. Like, yeah. When I say like basketball is a habit, like. When I walked outside and saw the basketball, I got excited. Yeah. And then when I saw the rim bent like yeah. that, I don't know who broke the rim. Outside, but <laughs> Man, it, was, it fell too many times. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like, blame the wind. But no, like, like we just came from um, my wife's her house where she grew up. She has a basketball hoop. Whenever I see a hoop in a basketball, it just, just makes you want to play. Man, like my eyes like light up. Yeah, like I remember I took like an hour outside, literally just to go shoot, just to shoot around. Man, and, like that's just kind of like your me time. Up. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you about um, was, so Izzo made the news last season for yelling at Aaron Henry and, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone thought it was this big deal. Internally, how did the team respond? Did you guys even address that? Like, is it, did everyone know? We only had to address it because the media addressed it. Okay. Personally, I mean, that's nothing new because that's how we coach us. Yeah. I feel like Michigan State fans, we've seen that like the, the whole time we've ever watched, you know? You, when you go to Michigan State, expect to be coached. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that's it. Yeah, like you, even if if you're on bull, expect to hear from it. You're like you're not just gonna um, go through the motions on the court. Yeah, like coach is gonna tell you, hey, you're on bull right now. You need to get it together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's just something that we expect. Yeah. And so when all that stuff came out, we kind of laughed about it. Like Aaron's just lucky that he got his name put in there because <laughs> that could yeah. happen to anybody yeah and then he came out next game and dropped like 20 or something like that or it was like mm-hmm. a few games later or something if I remember mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's funny how people say like oh man that made him blow up or that made him you know play good but like he's he was getting coached man. the whole season yeah it's just he finally had a really good game yeah you know yeah so then did coach even address that in the locker room or anything or was that just like between the players you guys talked about he it he addressed it like see how well Aaron's doing now but like he knows just as well as we know like he coaches Aaron that way every day you know he yeah. doesn't 
let Aaron slip up even the slightest bit. So just because the media got it doesn't mean that was the reason he blew up. He blew up because he was ready. Yeah. He was ready. That's true. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like Michigan State always makes the news for the wrong reasons. Like People try to put us in bad light. And yeah. I, it's so funny because I think it's because we do everything right. Like, we don't put money under the table to get, like, high recruits. Like like you said, we get four stars. We get four stars. Yeah. We get a three-star, you know. Make and, it work. Yeah, we make it work. Yeah. We don't, we don't do the, hey, hey, I know you're the number one player in the country. I, we'll throw you a couple thousand to come here. No, we yeah. don't do that. Yeah. If you don't like it here, you don't like it, and we move on. Yeah. I mean, you can see well, it with, like, Miles Bridges. Like, So he was probably the top recruit, one of the top recruits that, that we've ever had. And Jaren, too. And, yeah, Jaren. Um, but especially with Miles, like, the fact that he was willing to come back a second year really speaks to the power of the program. Like, he could have easily gone and started making his money right away, you know? And it's not like it affected his – he didn't go up in the draft or down in the draft because he stayed, you know. So it's just interesting to see. That's probably, yeah. like, never really happened before, um, especially with a player on his level. But like, a guy he could easily been – He could have already been making his money, but, you know. That's just a testament to him and, and yeah. wanting to be, you know, the best player at the time in college basketball. Like, he was he was motivated to be the number one pick in the draft. Like yeah. Like, that upcoming year, he was motivated – to go further in the tournament than mm-hmm. he did his freshman year. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's a testament to him and, and how dedicated he was to himself and the team. Yeah, yeah. What was it like playing with him for a season? Um, or did you not I, even really get to work with him that much? Like, it was a highlight reel. Yeah. Yeah, so my freshman year, it was like, I was watching. I thought, okay, listen, my freshman year I came in, I thought Miles could have left. Well, he did leave after that. Him, yeah. Jaron, uh, him, Jaron, Josh. There's talk of Nick leaving after that, right? Yeah, like, and Nick. Yeah. And maybe Nick. I don't know if that was four or five. But I thought all those guys could have been gone after my freshman year just because in practice, I'm getting cooked by all these guys. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, yeah, they're league bound because I'm supposed to be good. So yeah. they're way better than me. <laughs> league, they're, they're league bound, right? Yeah. And then uh, Miles and Jaron leave, and then Nick and Josh stay. And I'm just like, I don't get it. Like, why didn't you guys leave? And uh, they're just like, yeah, well, we didn't have a lot of NBA interest. And what's crazy to me is like, in my head, I put him on this pedestal. Like, I thought Josh had left after his sophomore year. Mm. And now he's here for his senior year. So now you can tell it's a testament to him because he's been devoted to the team. Like, right. he's, like, after he got hurt, he's been devoted to the yeah, team. Yeah, he was there at every game. Every game, every Wheeling practice. himself around. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wheeling, he could have been at home. Yeah. Yeah. And he was really... What's he? What's he like? Team. Have you talked to him? Is he excited to get back out there and play? Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, he. Um, you know, he's been. He just got cleared, so he's been working out, like a little bit jumping and stuff like that. And you know, it's crazy to see because he'd been on a boot or in a boot for like six months or so. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, like I'm not gonna see Josh play till like September, and it's July, and I see him jumping a little bit mm. on his jump shot. So it's pretty cool. It's That's good. powerful. It's good. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, there's been a lot of, like, uh, seriously unfortunate injuries. Like, I think about Aaron Harris a lot. Like, Mm -hmm. he was one player who had a big opportunity that season that he got hurt. And it just kind of, like, unfortunately, it pretty much ended his basketball as far as NBA goes. I mean, he could still make it. He's still a young cat, you know. But it's just crazy that Michigan State just kind of the unfortunate luck a few times, especially recently. But, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that like it's different for like him. He's got this Aaron Harris got this crazy mindset where his dreams are not dead in the slightest bit, you know. So like that's good. Even that's if good he's not man. making it through the draft to get to the NBA, he's still working every day to get to the NBA. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. or at yeah. least play basketball as long as he can. Yeah, yeah. See that with a guy like uh, Costello. Mm-hmm. Like he's playing he's balling for the Pistons right now in Average the summer league. Fifteen and eight. That's yeah. Costy. Yeah. yeah, I've been working on him. This whole or the beginning of summer from like uh, April or May up until he left for a summer league, we've been working out every morning. Yeah. And like I could tell that he was going to have a blowout just because he just worked out so hard and was so dedicated that every day he was doing something, whether he was getting where he was lifting and working out mm-hmm. or lifting and getting treatment on his ankle because he got hurt. Uh, not a year, but maybe like seven, seven months before that. Okay. Or he was okay. getting treatment on his ankle or something like that. But he was always doing something. He was never just like. Yeah, bro, I'm just going to chill for today. Like, he always did something. So I knew he was going to be good coming yeah. to the summer league. So I wanted to ask you this. Who was the hardest matchup for you ever since you've been in college? Who's Nick, the one guy, Nick, like, on your team or not on your team, whatever? Nick and uh, Zion. Mm. Mm. Nick, because he's so much bigger than you? 
Yeah, it was weird. Like <laughs> niggas, niggas got like a crazy one on one game, but For it real? ain't like he's got like hit you with a pull up jumper, hit you. No, like he knows how to make reads. So like he hit me twice in the chest with his shoulder, and I'd be like, okay, dang, that hurts. So I'm gonna like get tensed up now. Right. So as soon as I'm about to tense up, he'll spin right off me. I'll fall to the ground. He dunks it. Mm. Or like he hits me twice. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep backing up so he doesn't hit me. Hook shot right over my head. Like he's just cerebral in the one on one aspect. Yeah. So he was. Oh wow. It was hard. Yeah. Part. It was hard to stop him my freshman year in practice and stuff like that. Sophomore year, I started to get a feel for him. Okay, like I know what you're gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. force you to use your right hand because your left hand is automatic. Yeah. And then Zion, obviously, just because of his. <laughs> That was physique. your matchup, right? In that yeah, game? Yeah. Yeah. Because of his physique. I didn't know. Like, I was kind of excited, you know. Um, Nick was telling me for the game, like, hey, bro, you got him. And I was like, man, I got him. You know, they like, yeah, yeah I got of him. Of course. I, I was saying it, but in my head, I'm like, damn, I got him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Ooh. What was it like, man? Like, um, I mean, I just, obviously, everybody talks about him, but. I just wanted to do the best I could to limit him. So I knew he's going to get some highlight plays. That's just how he is. But like, just as long as he doesn't dunk on you, yeah, yeah that's it. Even I, I was expecting to get dunked. Yeah. On. Unfortunately, Kenny took the rap for that. Yeah. But like, and we watched film on him, and he drove left a lot. Like he just made a move right and drove left, and then just did a finish. So I was okay. Coach said he only goes left, or mostly only goes left. So I play him for his left hand every single time. Like he's gonna go back left, and if he goes right, he's just gonna have to dunk it because I'm not letting him go you're, left. Yeah, sitting on his left. Right. So. In the game, that's what I kept doing. And I kept seeing, he just kept wanting to go left, kept wanting to go left. So I'm like, okay, like I can stop him if he goes left. But if he goes <laughs> right, that's a wrap. Yeah. And then um, I was going to let him shoot threes because I knew that I, I'd have a better chance of him shooting threes than of him coming at me into the basket for a finish. So yeah. he was a tough guy to guard, mostly because of his physique, though. Like boxing him out and stuff like that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's wow. crazy, man. It's bigger than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Big bully out there. 285, 285. Right? I think he's 300 now, people say. For real? Yeah. He put on 15? He put on more? Mm-hmm. Oh, but, like, now I don't know if it's muscle, though. I think it's because, like, new he's, contract, he's been in New Orleans. He's not good combo. He's not good combo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever play any, play against any guys like that in AAU growing up? Mm-hmm. Any big names and all that? Mo Bamba. Played against man. him at Peach Jam. He was, really, he was really good. Um, you know, Kendrick. did you ever play against uh, Devin Booker? Or was he too old, too much too older old, than you? Too, I, I never played against Devin Booker. Throw some names out there. I might have played against him. Bam at a bio, really from Kentucky. I played against this, him. That's he, he was on a my hard team. Matchup. He was oh, on my okay. team, and I played against him. He was huge. Yeah, that's a big boy. He reminded me of Dwight Howard. Mm. He mm. Was like the bounce and build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's got a little bit. What about your candy. teammate, uh, Dwayne Washington? Did you guys play together or against each other growing up? Like, um, what was that like? I want to tell you, I played against him somewhere, but I don't think I had. It's maybe always. Oh, I just played against him this last year at Ohio State. I think that was the yeah. first time I might have played against yeah, him. Yeah, what was what was that like? Like that seeing was, someone you grew up with? That and, was great. Yeah. You know, because he's in my inner circle. Him, yeah. Dwayne Washington, James Beck, Seth Milner, uh, Jalen Sartor, uh, Christian Rodriguez. Those guys are like are my circle for basketball wise yeah and to see him on that level and to play against him like that like I was just happy for him even like yeah. obviously you're supposed to like root against your opponent or whatever in the game but I was so happy just to see him on that level yeah, yeah. you know so talking a little cool. trash to him or nah yeah a little bit yeah. you know but really I was encouraging him like yeah, yeah be aggressive on this because like I'm like this is my guy playing on this level like yeah. I want the best for him type of thing yeah yeah. did you cool. try to push him to go to Michigan State or? yeah I wanted him to, he wanted to go there bad they never called or anything. Um, he couldn't play defense. Uh, he loved to score. Like he's, he loved to score. Yeah. But he, defense wasn't his priority. Mm-hmm. And for us, like we check. That's what we do at Michigan State. We play defense. But he was just. I mean, he could score the ball at will. Make it shoot. But he didn't want to check all the time, and mm-hmm. that was kind of that kind of hurt him. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Was there anyone else? You, I mean, wasn't uh, Marcus Bingham? Didn't he play with you in high school for a little bit? Wasn't he in Grand Rapids Christian? Catholic. Huh? He went to Catholic. Central. Oh, okay. So you guys played against each other a lot. Yeah, twice. Man. My, my, no, I played against him. Yeah, my junior year, my senior year. Okay. My junior year, he went to um, Ottawa. No. Yeah, he might have went to Ottawa. My junior Transferred year. to Ottawa? Yeah. Okay. Or no, he was he started off at Ottawa. Ottawa oh, okay. Hills, and okay. then he transferred to Catholic going into my senior year. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so were you guys friends? Because you knew that you probably would have ended up at the same place. We didn't really become friends until 
we got I got on campus. Okay. Yeah, and then he was visiting stuff like that, but we weren't really that close to him. Yeah. Oh wow. What's it like with him, like playing against him? Because I mean, everyone talks about his potential and all that. Like, are you trying to be his mentor and all that? Yeah, he's got crazy potential. He just needs like the right guidance. Um, he's one of those guys who kind of just goes with the flow, whatever the vibe is, and that could be positive or negative. Yeah. And uh, he's one of those guys I try to put under my wing just because he's got crazy. He's got guard game. Like, you should see his yeah, head. He hit, him, he hit you with a <laughs> hezzy, and you're like, bro, you seven foot. You're not supposed to be able to hit me yeah. with a hezzy. Hit him with a hezzy, boom, step off three. Hit, like, one of the better three-point shooters on our team. And he's a really? seven footer. Yeah. Man. He can shoot that thing. He's got a big opportunity this season, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, right now, our starting four spot is up because Kenny left. So, now... You got either Marcus mm. or you got Thomas or you got Malik Hall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you excited about the, the freshman class incoming? Yeah. I uh, mean, Rockets, like, he's pretty much a social media superstar at this point. So mm-hmm. he got crazy followers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Has he gave you the juice? No. Nah, a little shout out yet? I ain't asked for it, though. <laughs> it'll come. Yeah. It'll come. It, it'll come. But that's my young dog, though. Yeah. So I don't really. You know, try to get clout off him or anything like that. Yeah. But uh, I'm excited for those guys. I'm always excited for freshmen because freshmen is just the unknown. You don't know mm-hmm. what they're going to bring to the table. Like last year, I didn't know Aaron Henry was going to blow up like he did. Yeah. The way he played and stuff like that. You know, I would have thought it was Marcus based off like high school rankings. Mm-hmm. But Marcus barely played because of his weight, you know. Yeah. So He's put a, on like a good amount of weight. Yeah, right? He weighs like 225 right now. Okay. Yeah. Compared to 190 when he got in. That's or crazy. One, yeah, 190, I think it was. Man, 30 pounds or something like that? That's mm-hmm. crazy. So, yeah, he's definitely gotten a lot stronger. But, like, it's just the unknown with freshmen. So, I love when freshmen come in just because you don't know what they're going to bring to the Because you know what they're feeling and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nervous. In every practice, they're nervous as hell. They don't want to make a mistake because coach is going to chew them out. Yeah. But that's part of being a freshman. Like, when you get older, you want to get coached. But when you're younger, you don't want to make any mistakes. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Talk about, like, growing up getting coached. Like, was there probably the high school coach but was there anyone who was super impactful on your trajectory going forward that uh, you can call like Eric Taylor we call him ET he's the head coach at Grand Bush Christian right now when I was there he was the assistant coach okay but he played at Oakland and played overseas for a while and he was uh, one of those he was a big mentor for me to help me stay dedicated in school mm-hmm. uh, and he worked me out a ton while I was there just cause he knew the game so well yeah um, yeah. He was a big mentor for me. Um, you guys remember Drake Harris? Yeah. 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 I mean, I didn't really talk to him a lot, but that was one of those guys growing up, getting into high school or before high school, maybe like middle school. I looked up to him because he was that big name in Grand Rapids. Yeah. I wanted to be like just like him as far as getting the notoriety and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You talk to him now? Not as much. I mean, no. I didn't really get a chance to know him. So, you know, my brother, Tony, those those two guys are really close friends. Okay. Yeah, but otherwise, I don't really talk to them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, I want to know about the, the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry. Like, what's it really like on the court? Like, you guys it's, talk of trash, like, yeah. extra it's, elbows, all that. It's bad. Yeah. And, like, my freshman year, I'm like, I don't understand this. Like, we were in the locker room, like, man, Michigan, da, da, da. <laughs> My freshman year, and I'm like, I don't understand, bro. What's the beef about? And then I got yeah. on the court, like, okay, I see. Yeah, like, they're, like both ways, but mostly them, they dirty. Like they're yeah. just the way they play. Tougher you know? screens and all that. Tougher screens, grabbing you, pinching you, da da da, scratching you. You're like, man, like you're not even hooping. You just trying to fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, whatever. And um, as you played against them, you start to like feel the rivalry for real. Yeah. So like losing the two games that we did my freshman year against them. My sophomore year, I was so excited to play Michigan because I'm like, I'm on your head the whole game. Yeah, yeah. Like, because just because. It's your time, it was. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then giving them the business in the tournament. I'm sure that felt great. Man. Yeah. Um, I knew we were winning the game when Arnie went down. Kyle Arns. Yeah. When he got hurt, I was like, you everybody yeah. was so hurt by that because he'd been working his butt off to get back into playing for him. And then when he got hurt and was out for the season, uh, we were just like, oh, yeah, just, we're going to win yeah. this game. Just, just about just for him really yeah 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 i was i was at that game with my family it was a different environment when he got hurt like everyone's cheering air, yeah. clapping like yeah like it was silent when he got hurt and then yeah that's one of those things like someone goes down and you know you're about to win like i think when kevin ware got hurt all those years ago that was a while ago that was the nastiest injury i've ever seen was that when the snap like that yeah. yeah that was oh. gross bro and he I just watched him like he like just that, jumped out to contest the shot too, if yeah, I remember. Right, like, and the, what his bone just 
Uh, Dude, what happened to him? Uh, he transferred to some smaller, still D one school, I think. Oh, and, then he just and I think he's it. working on making it like summer league and all that right now. Oh, really? if I remember right, yeah. He was straight. He wasn't a bad player. Yeah, I was really saying, he was really straight. good. Player. He yeah. was good. He I was mean, good. it's just like when your leg snaps. Like, like seeing with like Gordon Hayward, like sometimes you just don't really come back. Yeah, like, I shot, think Gordon big Hayward. Big shouts to Paul George, man. It's gonna be hard for Gordon Hayward to come back because you can still see when he plays, like he's kind of like scared, like yo, like mm-hmm. I really don't want to get hurt again. Yeah. yeah. But you can't even blame him for that, man. That's just like... A freak accident. Yeah. yeah like you can't, I mean, that's what's crazy about Paul George and how his past two seasons has gone, you know? Or I guess past season. Like, he's he really had the best season of his career following a devastating injury like that. Like, like that's what we talked about, about being like the momentum. And he his... Paul George's momentum. He was on the up. Was like on the yeah. up. That yeah. That was Paul George. He was 24 at the time. That was Paul George number 24. Like yeah. everybody was like, yeah, yeah, he's for real. Yeah, yep. <laughs> he's for real. I still real. got the Pacers yeah. jersey upstairs. Yeah, yeah, like, when I was in love with Paul George. Wait, the Pacers were getting a hell of TV time. Bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, wait, he was, they're, they're battling with the Heat. Yeah, they he was, was carrying them against the Heat. Like, so they're like, oh yeah, Paul George is like, like Paul yeah. George is about to be the man. Because who he dunked on? Who he dunk on? I guess it was like LeBron and Birdman. Yeah, yeah. Took him up, big body. Oh man, that's one of the craziest dunks I ever mm-hmm. seen. So like, where everybody's like, "Yeah, Paul George is on the up." Like Paul George, is like all star da da da, and then he gets hurt, and they're like, "What well, practice too, man?" It's like, yeah. and the USA built back, back from, from zero, zero again. Like, like, literally built back from zero. He said he like obviously when you go through injury, like they said he wanted to quit. Yeah, and it's crazy to me to even think about like just quitting basketball but when you really can't play a game that you love yeah. mm. you it's hard to say like alright bro I guess I'm just done yeah. cause you yeah. think you are like I'm never gonna get back to yeah. where I was yeah. look at them especially cause you see it a too. lot like people snap their leg they never are the come same back. you yeah. know it's hard to come back from something like that this yeah. is traumatic in your head yeah. yeah yeah speaks to his mentality like Clippers 2020 man yikes you gotta dip yeah I gotta dip alright that's it. Uh, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. I think this is cool. I don't know how long we talked, but it was a while. We talked for a minute. So yeah. episode seven of the Takeaway Podcast. Thank you for everyone who Big tuned man in. Till came through. Yeah. Yeah. Drop Catch some knowledge on us. Peace. Yeah, anyone come to the camera? No. <laughs> <laughs> we try. We try. We try. You sure? You sure? The the people okay. want to see you. You just come say hi real quick. No. no okay. No. She's not. Okay. okay. It's all good. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> see ya. See ya.